Well, good evening, active traders, and welcome to Three Favorite Price Patterns. I'm Ken Calhoun from Trade Mastery, and I'm joined by my longtime colleague, the very intelligent, smart, knows what he's talking about, Dr. Barry Burns from TopDogTrading.com. Uh, Barry, it's great to have you with us here tonight. Well, thank you, Ken. It's my privilege, and I appreciate the invitation. Yeah, and I wanted to thank all of you for being here. We're up at a record-breaking 801 registered attendees tonight. So that's a record for uh, the JV webinars that I do. So thanks to all of you for making time to show up. You're in the right spot. I, Barry's going to lead off the first half hour, then I'll do the second half hour. I'll just read a disclaimer and then hand it over to uh, to Barry. Um, as always, all information is for educational use only. We don't make advice about to buy, sell, or hold. And by watching this, we do not make actual trades. It's all for learning. Now, let me introduce Barry. Dr. Barry Burns is the author of Trend Trading for Dummies. He's received multiple Reader's Choice Awards from the readers of Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities magazine, including this most recent one. I saw he came in second, which is great. Out of all the hundreds and thousands of educators uh, in the top two there, that's great. He's given seminars around the country at many wealth expos and traders expos. Barry's the founder of www.topdogtrading.com. and also, I highly recommend his uh, YouTube channel. It's one of my top three favorite in the entire world for stock traders. So be sure to check out his YouTube channel as well as topdogtrading.com. I will hand it over to Barry. And uh, thanks, Barry, for being here. All righty. Well, thank you, Ken. It's, uh, again, my pleasure. I always love working with you and doing um, co-educational events with you because you um, – have a lot of integrity. You know, you and I have known each other for quite a while. I've been through your education materials myself, so I know that they are excellent from my own personal experience. And uh, so I always feel very, very, um, not only comfortable, but hyper confident to um, work with you and, and share your stuff with people, knowing that they're, they're getting good stuff from you as well. So, yep, good guys, we got to stay together. Right. So anyway, um, very good, and to everybody who's here, welcome. I want to just start out by letting you all know that I recently started a new adventure. It adventured out into the audio world of podcasting. So it took me a little while, but finally did it. So it's still a brand new podcast. I think there's about 20 episodes up right now. And obviously, podcasts are free, so it's another free resource for you. I invite you to join me on the Online Trading to Win podcast. And you can just search for it on iTunes, iTunes, uh, Google Play, Music, Stitcher. I think we're on several other uh, platforms as well. And uh, by the way, excited to say that uh, Ken was... Um, also one of my guests on one of the episodes. So be sure you check that one out. That is the best episode of the 20 so far. Oh, and uh, <laughs> well, seriously, it was, it was amazing. It was excellent. And, um, you know, again, I know Ken's awesome. So that's why I invited him to, uh, to come out early into the series. So yeah, check that one out for sure. And there's other good stuff on there as well. Um, I don't put anything out unless it's uh, very, very good and pertinent and valuable. So again, nothing to sell you there. Just uh, giving you a great free resource and um, hopefully you'll uh, you'll join us. Okay. Oh, Ken already did the disclaimers. So, I mean, I do love our lawyers, but enough is enough, right? So, okay. <laughs> You've already got that stuff. So today what I'm going to focus on are three price patterns that I absolutely love. The first one is called Moving Average Convergences. The second one is Triangles. I used to be known as the Triangle Master when I did a, um, a chat room, a live trading room I did for about three and a half years for futurestalk.net. They, uh, they hired me to be their head moderator. So I did the open and the close of every trading day for, gosh, about three and a half, four years. And um, I'd always be pointing out these triangles and people would be like, I don't see the triangle. It's, it's right there. They couldn't see it. So some, for some reason, I don't know, I have an affinity toward triangles. So I'll show you how I do it a little more um, advanced way, uh, a little different than most people do it. So I've got my own unique take on that, which uh, has been very profitable for me. And you can try it out for yourself, see if it resonates with you. And then uh, what I call detachment from equilibrium. And this one is specifically for intraday trading, moving average convergences, triangles that can be done on really any time interval. So if you're a swing trader, day trader, whatever, 
detachment from equilibrium that is specifically an intraday trading uh, entry. However, you can carry it over into another day if you want to, if you're the type of person who will take a, a trade and um, carry it over into a second day. Okay, so, well, let's just jump right into it without any further ado. So, uh, let's see here. I'm going to bring up my little spotlight. All right, so moving average convergences, these are the four moving averages that I use for this trade. And regardless of time frame, so you'll see I have Apple here, obviously, and it's a three-minute chart. There's really no importance in particular to that. Uh, you could trade this with any reasonable stock. When I say reasonable, you know, I, I would expect that you would trade within a uh, price uh, range that fits your trading account. Apple's pretty expensive, but um, you know, if you want to use generally, I, I trade lower price stocks myself, but I do like Apple. If you have a large trading account, you can trade something this size, but I would expect most people would be trading um, less expensive stocks. Three minute charts are cool, but again, if you want to trade five minute, two minute, take charts, whatever your time frame is, that's fine. Again, you can do this on daily charts, weekly charts, even monthly charts if you want to use this for investing. So I manage a pension plan and um, and I look for this kind of stuff all the time. So here are the four moving averages that we're going to use for this technique, the 15 EMA, the 50 SMA, 100 SMA, and the 200 SMA. Uh, very common, especially the last three are very, very common moving averages. Probably the 50 and the 200 are, I'm guessing, the most popular moving averages used by the most people. 100 is used by a lot of people. And then a lot of people use a short-term moving average. Um, some people like 20, 15. If you want to use a different moving average there, if you already have a favorite short-term moving average, that's fine. You don't have to literally stick with the 15 EMA. Um, just have one that is a short-term and fast moving average. So I say that because I don't necessarily, you know, require for this trade that you change your whole trading structure and your, your chart setup. So there, there's some flexibility there. It's the concept that is really the most important. And the concept is this, the moving averages converge. So as you'll see here, in fact, let me just point them out to you. So looking at the right end of the chart here, the 15 EMA, that's the black line. The, the um, well, green line here is my 50 simple moving average. The gold line is the 100 simple and the purple or, well, my guy, so I say purple, my wife would probably say something like, plum or i don't know women have like 50 different words for purple right guys have one purple so whatever that is <laughs> i'll call it purple because i'm a guy so um okay so that's the 200 simple moving average so what we're looking for is just like you see in this rectangle here where they all converge together so what does that mean as Ken said, you know, I'm a very logical trader and I, I do try to be. So the logic of this is actually pretty simple. It just simply means within the last 15 bars, 50 bars, 100 bars, 200 bars, there's been no real significant change in price. And what that means is we are in a low volatility market. What I call a contracting market. Now, I have studied cycles um, very extensively. In fact, I studied under the one of the greatest cycle analysts in the country, if not the world. And um, a very interesting study. The theoretical part of it is absolutely fascinating for an intellectual exercise. As far as the practical use of it, though, um, I've brought it back down to some very simple things. And um, actually, all three of these patterns are related to volatility cycles, where the market goes into contraction, narrow range, and then boom, into expansion. One of the most popular patterns would be Bollinger Band squeezes. Most people are familiar with that. That's the same type of dynamic. You wait for the Bollinger Bands to squeeze together. We're in a low volatility market, a contracting range of price. And why would we trade that? Well, because after a cycle of low volatility, then we're expecting a cycle of high volatility. We want to catch that early, early as possible. And so this is a variation of that. In fact, all three of these trades are variations of that. So we're not using Bollinger Bands here, just kind of all moving averages on there. They've all kind of clustered together. And so that's our signal that, okay, we are in a low volatility market. And by the way, 
Let me bring out my little drawing tool here. I'm going to have to change that color. Let's change it to something that stands out like um, blue. Blue should stand out pretty well. So, oops, got to bring it over to my pen. Okay, so you'll see that in this area here, all in this area, the price action, the price bars are stuck between the highest and the lowest of the four moving averages. And this is what I call a pinball pattern. It just pinballs in between these moving averages. And if you look at that whole section there, that's really, in fact, maybe in the next time I show this presentation, I'll expand this rectangle to include all of this, because that's really your whole contraction pattern. Okay, I did it here just because that's where the moving averages cluster together the closest. As you'll notice, they, um, they're a little further apart here, but price is still in between them. So it's really this whole time that we're in a narrow range pattern. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for basically a breakout. It's a type of breakout trading. All right, so let's uh, clear up my mess here. And we are looking for it to break out of the moving averages, either above or below the highest or the lowest moving averages. So boom, bada bing, bada boom, we do it. And we gotta stay, we want it to stay above, goes to resistance. All right, I might actually take some profits there, a little bit, just for pure money management purposes. And so here is our little cluster, and look what happens. So we stay above, stay above, stay above, boom, we hit that. Uh, this is, by the way, this resistance level is just a major previous high. And then it comes back, I call this a reload, and comes back down here, test, and then bam, expands. And that's why we're really in the trade. Okay, so yes, I'll take a little bit of profits off here. I'll take, because I want to do two things. It's risk management, money management, because we never, ever, I don't care who they are, I don't care if your name is Warren Buffett, you don't know the future of the market, and neither do I. The only one who does is God, and he ain't telling. So risk management, money management is absolutely essential to your trading. Way more important than any indicators, candlestick patterns, moving averages, anything. And ironically, most people spend all their time studying price patterns, um, moving averages, uh, indicators especially, right? People get obsessed with indicators, which is ridiculous. But they don't get obsessed with money management and risk management. That's what you should be obsessed with. That's what professionals are obsessed with. Because we know we don't know the future. So I am pretty good. I don't like to use, to use the word predict, but I'm pretty good at catching like a first impulse move. In fact, I'm really good at that. Way, way, way better than 50-50 uh, reward to, re to risk ratio on that. So I'm very comfortable with that. I'll lock in a little bit of money, put some green into my wallet or my purse. Well, I don't carry a purse, a man's purse. No, I'm not in Europe. But anyway, so whether you're a man or a woman, you know, you lock some money in, you, you take some profits. And now that does two things. Number one, you got some money. And number two, your risk isn't as much because you don't have as much money riding on the trade. So even if I did get stopped out, I wouldn't get a, what I call a full boat loser, right? And I, that even if I did get a loser, it'd be on a smaller amount and it'd be offset by some of the wins. And I, I do this over and over and over and over. The point is to always go home with some money. That's the point. Not to be right. This is where, again, a lot of traders get it messed up. They're always trying to be right, to guess what the market's going to do. Well, if you can do that, um, you're a better person than I am. <laughs> In fact, I've never met anyone who can do that consistently. So every professional life trader that I know of, this is the key. We find uh, very high probability short-term moves, and then we manage our money, take some money, move our stops, whatever. Point is, we're here to just make some money. Most of them are gonna be singles, to use a baseball analogy, right? Hit a couple singles, and then eventually, boom, you catch the sweet spot and you get your home run. And I'll just tell you, for me personally, I might get two home runs a week. And those are big, but that's not every day. That's not every day. 
if I, and that's not most of my trades. And I know that going in, that really helps me. Okay, so let's talk about triangles now, my famous triangles. So what we got here is a symmetrical triangle, lower high and higher low. And so that's what makes it a symmetrical triangle. Now, there's three ways to trade triangles traditionally. Actually, traditionally, there's two, and I'm going to add in a non-traditional one. So the first one is to trade the breakout of what they would call the trend line. So as soon as the market breaks through that trend line, um, they would go short. Okay, that's viable. That's one good choice. Another one is to wait for what they call the throwback. And this is not technically a retrace. A lot of people call this a retrace. It's not. Retraces occur in trends. Throwbacks occur in breakouts. So they would wait for the breakout. And then they say, okay, I don't want to take it yet. I'm going to wait for it to come back up here and then go short and go short from up here. And that's a viable way to trade triangles as well. Pluses and minuses to both. The minus of waiting for the throwback is that sometimes the market doesn't throw back. So if it just breaks out and it just keeps going, well, you don't get a trade. Is that okay? Sure, that's fine. That's just not your game, right? You just define your game from the beginning, say, here's what I trade. When the market doesn't do uh, what I want it to do according to my setup, I'm perfectly fine with that. I've already mentally adjusted that, no problem, what without me this time, cool, because I only trade this setup. And you can't have buyer's remorse or shorter's remorse or trader's remorse to make a more general term. And then try to, you know, re-engineer everything, reverse engineer it and say, well, how could I have caught it this time? Oh my gosh, you'll drive yourself mentally insane. You'll end up in the trader's insane asylum if you try to figure out how you could catch every move in the market because no one can, no one does. So we all find our high probability trade and then we wait for the market to come to us as opposed to chasing the market. So those are two ways that you can play it. Um, now, for the pure breakout people, the challenge is that, and this is more of a psychological challenge than anything else, that, okay, it breaks out, boom, you get in, maybe down here somewhere, and then it does this monkey business, right? Boom, 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 boom. And this is where you're psychologically suffering, okay? That's the psychological suffer zone. <laughs> and that lasts for, what, about an hour. Right? That lasts for about an hour, an hour of mental anguish and pain. Now you're reaching for the Xanax. No, okay, I shouldn't say that. But, um, you know, but seriously, it's an issue, right? It's an issue that we all have dealt with. And so it's a reality that we have to say, okay, am I able to deal with that? This is a question each one of us has to answer for ourselves. Can I deal with that? If the answer is no for you, then you shouldn't trade that style. If the answer is like, yeah, I'm cool. I practice Zen meditation every day, no problem. You know, um, I've got my rules in place and I keep them perfectly, then that's great. Then that might be a technique for you as well. All right now, I don't do either one of those personally. Again, they're both viable, they're both fine. Um, the one that resonates with me the most might seem a little riskier to you at first. But I've learned something in trading. And that is this, <laughs> there's so many ironies in trading. And one of them is that amateur traders tend to wait for too much confirmation, too much confirmation. And the irony is that by the time everything is confirmed, everything is known, everything is obvious, and that's when you feel comfortable emotionally to take a trade, the trade is done, the deal is over. And so it actually ends up being the riskiest way to trade the least secure way to trade. So that's the irony. So professional traders, we are always trying to get in as early as possible. So it seems riskier, but it's really not. And it's kind of analogous to the saying that you've probably heard, buy the rumor, sell the news. The news is when everything's confirmed. Everybody knows it all, the data's all there, it's all been priced in, that the deal's done, right? Everybody's got the data and there's no more trade now. So professional traders tend to trade the rumor or buy the rumor. And in Tao theory, this is actually a part of the ancient Tao theory, which is 
called discounting the market. And it's, it's just another term. So it, it's actually in classic technical analysis, this theory. So I apply that same concept to triangle training. So I actually like to go short here. Huh. And I get a lot of people I actually posted a YouTube video on this one time. Uh, and I think the um, title of it was something about trading triangle breakouts or something like that. And I got a bunch of people who really objected to that title saying, well, you're not trading a triangle breakout. And my response was, yes, I am. Now, I understand what they're saying because they are right in that I wasn't trading after the breakout. My point was the purpose for my trade is to trade a breakout. I'm just getting in before the breakout, but that's still the reason I'm taking the trade. So I still consider it a triangle breakout trade. But you know, it was interesting to me because it's one of the, um, I don't get a lot of uh, pushback on my videos, a few, but this is one of them that I got the most pushback on. And that actually to me was like, great, that shows me I'm on the right path because, <laughs> and there's been a few other things too. It's like the ones that I get the most, not really criticism, but just people questioning or saying I'm wrong or that's not the way you do it. You know what, those, those are the techniques, the strategies that make me the most money. And I guess it shouldn't be surprising since most people don't make money trading and they're following the classic technical analysis techniques, which a lot of them are good. Unfortunately, some of them don't work anymore because a lot of the classic stuff was written in the 1940s when the Bible of technical analysis was written. And things have changed a little bit since the 1940s, if you haven't noticed. Um, I was born since then, so that's a long time ago. And when I was born, we had black and white TV, so I'm ancient. <laughs> we didn't have algo trading, high frequency trading. Heck, we didn't have computers. So yeah, the advent of uh, computerized trading, uh, algorithmic trading, high frequency trading, direct access, the commoditization of direct access, low commissions, what's all that stuff mean? It means that now people get in and out faster. And that's changed price patterns on charts. Before, trend trading used to work so well because it took so long and so it was so slow to get your orders in. And now you'd have to call your broker on a rotary telephone, 100 bucks to get in, 100 bucks to get out. You know, and, and what was the price? Well, I don't know. I'd have to look at yesterday's newspaper to find the price of the stock. Today, no. So things move faster and um, markets just don't trend as much. Anyway, all that beside the point is that you've got to really affect, Ken and I were just talking about this, that we need to keep up with the times. You know, things have really changed. And yeah, a lot of the classic technical analysis is still good, but some of it, it's not that it's bad or wrong. It's just that it's out of date. So anyway, long story short here, but these are principles and concepts you really need to be aware of. So I go short here and see now my reward to risk ratio is better. So if we get out here, for example, and I'm getting in here, okay, that's my reward. If I trade the breakout, that's my reward. If I trade the throwback, that's my reward. My risk is still gonna be the same on every trade, but my reward to risk ratio is better trading way up here. And I'm getting in before everybody else. So when people tell me, oh, I trade the breakout or I trade the throwback, I say, thank you very much. And they're like, why are you thanking me? I said, well, cause you're pushing, you're adding more selling power to the trade I'm already in. So thank you, appreciate that. And they don't always laugh about that one. Now, the other thing on this trade is real quick and uh, boy, it takes longer to describe these things than I thought. So I'm gonna have to speed it up here a little bit. But this is what I call concurrent setups. So this adds even more power to the trade. We have an extended trend here. We're in a wave five. In other words, a head and shoulders pattern, a proper head and shoulders pattern only occurs at the end of a trend. Don't look for these in the middle of trends. Those are not technically head and shoulder patterns. But here we got three, wave five, and then we get a lower high. So concurrent setups, we've got both a triangle and a head and shoulders. So to me, that adds to the probability of success. That's one of the reasons I would be confident trading early here, earlier than most people would be confident because I'm saying, yeah, not only do I have a triangle because people would say, well, how do you know that's the final high, right? Well, one of the reasons gives me that confidence is we're in an extended trend. And as we all have heard, the trend is your friend until what? The end. So that's when I'm willing to potentially trade against it.
Okay, so let me uh, move on to the final, uh, there we go, final trade. So this is a bonus trade. This one I don't teach very much. In fact, um, yeah, this is not even in any of my courses. So you guys are getting a, uh, an extra trade here. I call this detachment from equilibrium. As I said earlier, this is really for day traders. So it's based on floor trader pivots. You put your floor trader pivots on there. Here's our central pivot or pivot point. And that's one. So that is a point of equilibrium for the day. You've got resistance levels above, R1, R2, R3. You've got support levels below, S1, S2, S3. So pivot point or central pivot, that's your point of equilibrium. Now, I'm going to combine that, though. I'm going to combine it with yesterday's close. Because even if traders don't use uh, floor trader pivots, everybody in this parakeet is looking at yesterday's close as well as yesterday's high and yesterday's low, right? Those three levels are just, everybody's looking at them. So they have a self-fulfilling prophecy in the sense that you've got the masses of people looking at those levels and using them to determine, are we in a bullish or bearish phase? Yesterday's close, hey, if we go above it, guess what? Then the, um, the numbers on your, uh, on your, what the heck do they call that thing? Anyway, then it'll show positive for the S&P. If it goes below yesterday's close, it shows negative for the S&P compared to the previous day, right? Quote screen, yeah, quote screen, that's it. <laughs> and so it's a thing where it turns green or red at that one point, and that sticks out to people, right? So when this is the zone, this is a zone that I'm looking at in between those. I'm not using one or the other, I'm using both as a neutral zone. And so again, it's a point of equilibrium. Again, we're looking for a balancing point. So here's what I do. I look for uh, market comes down, boom, breaks down below yesterday's low. By the way, be very careful of these yesterday high and lows. They're, they are noted by everybody, but I see people, I don't know if they're gaming them or whatever, but just because it goes below yesterday's low does not mean it's going to stay there. As you can see here, it goes back up, comes back down. It's like, oh, we're bearish. Nope, we come back up again. I see this kind of stuff all the time. So I would rather, again, just like with a triangle, I want to use an earlier reference point than yesterday's low or yesterday's high. And the reference point I use is this level or this zone of equilibrium. So I wait for it to come into the zone of equilibrium, break out one way or the other, Whichever way it breaks out, that's the way I'm going to trade. Now, if it goes yesterday's low, I might take some profits in and around there. It goes to S1, maybe there. We'll just kind of watch the price action, right? There's really no retracement, so why get out? Um, it goes to the mid pivot, gets down to S2, keeps going. Let's look at the next slide. And by the end of the day, it, uh, yeah, sweet, all the way down there. Big winner, gets all the way down to the mid pivot. And this uh, blue line here, that's also a major swing low from a, a previous day. So that's what I'm looking for, this zone of equilibrium. And then to show a bullish or bearish sentiment for the day, lock in some profits along the way, see if we can ride the rest until the, well, until, well, that's actually the end of the day there, because these are California times since I live in Los Angeles. So uh, 1300 hours is actually um, four o'clock New York. Okay, so let's see here. I've got two minutes. All right. So I gave you three patterns today. I actually do use this in conjunction with a higher time frame. So when I'm looking for a breakout one way or the other, I do use a filter and that filter is to make sure I'm trading in direction of the momentum, not trend, but momentum of the higher time frame. And so that is one of my um, additional filters that I use on every trade that I take. All right, so don't have time for questions here today. I wanna to make sure Ken gets his full half hour in, but if you do have any questions, I very much cherish them and I do want to answer them and I will answer them. So I invite you to send me an email, barry at topdogtrading.com. By the way, never be shy about sending me emails or corresponding with me because I actually love talking with traders. Still passionate about trading after all these years and there's nothing I enjoy more than talking with traders and helping you out. So yeah, send any questions you have to me right there at barry at topdogtrading.com. 
I, unfortunately, I kind of dropped the ball today. I should have come with something to sell, and dang, I didn't. Well, anyway, I'll give you something for free. How's was that? Hope you don't mind. Probably all mad at me now. But anyway, I'll give you one of my um, one of my mini courses for free today. It's five videos. Each video is about 15 or 20 minutes long, so it's a quick study. Five videos. Each one has an interactive quiz at the end because I want to make sure you get a feedback loop there to make sure that you understand the material so you can trade it effectively and profitably. And the course is not just theory or ideas. I'm actually including one of my favorite trade setups I call the rubber band trade. And I take this trade still to this day. In fact, I just took it today on gold. Made some really good money with it today on gold. So I'm still using this. This is not a has-been trade. I'm just throwing your way. Now, this is one of my favorite trades that I make money with consistently. So it's a very practical course. Uh, I do encourage you to trade this on a simulator or demo account before you trade real money with it. And I'm also going to give you access to my cycle indicator, which I normally do sell. But uh, as a guest here on Ken's presentation, and because of our relationship, I'm happy to um, give you the cycle indicator for free. That uh, takes, that's gonna be on another webinar. That webinar takes about an hour because I gotta show you how to set it up on your charts. Works on any charting platform, by the way, because we actually just modify a very common indicator. So take about 15, no, yeah, 15, 10, 15 minutes to get the um, indicator set up on your chart, whatever charting software you have. And then we take about 30 minutes to show you how to trade it because how to trade it, the actual triggers are not very obvious. In fact, they're actually counterintuitive like a lot of good things in trading. So I'll show you how to trade it, give you a full tutorial, all for free. And if you have a trading method you already like, you can just add this as a way to trigger you into trades with a very, very high precision. So there is the... Um, URL, topdogtrading.com forward slash free dot HTML. Uh, just go there, and I see that Ken already typed it into the chat box, so that's awesome. You can't click on this slide, but if you click on the link in the chat box, that'll take you directly there. Just um, register for the free course. And by the way, the way to get the cycle indicator, it's all the same. You just go to this website here, topdogtrading.com slash free dot HTML, and you'll get access to everything, including the cycle indicator webinar all right so that's it for me i went one minute over not too bad but uh, anyway hope you got value out of the presentation i loved being here and sharing this information with you and ken thanks for the invite and i'll turn it over to you well thanks for a very intelligent well thought out presentation dr barry burns he's one of the good guys out there in the industry he's got a very logical sensible smart you can actually learn how to trade from this guy approach and I'm a big fan of his YouTube videos as well as his other content. So thank you so much, Barry, for your presentation. It's always a pleasure to learn from you. You're one of the smart guys out there. I've learned from myself over the years, so appreciate it. You're a voice of reason out there, which is saying a lot in this industry. So hi. Uh, hey, well, welcome aboard, folks. Uh, I'm going to give you my, my three favorite charts. We're going to look at some live charts today in our current markets. And let me start off by asking, can all of you see these charts okay? For example, one of my favorite patterns is minor gap continuations. You can see Holly Frontier today, HFC, did a small gap from 61. This is called a mean reversion. You may have seen my article in Stocks and Commodities magazine on mean reversion day trading breakouts. That's where it pulls back, fancy way of saying 50% retracement. You get a gap, it runs up to a nice resistance area, pulls back down to half, and then slingshots on up to new highs. But what I want to give you today is my very favorite charts in today's markets and we're going to look at every single one of these quickly and I'm going to show you a combination of my favorite three patterns which are gap continuations, ascending acceleration ramps, and cut pattern breakouts and we've got so many to work with. The one thing, you know, one thing that Barry said that's very intelligent and correct is professional traders, we spend a lot more time and effort on our risk management and the money management than the charts. In fact, one of my often quoted sayings is that I invented years ago is the math, the numbers, is a lot more important than the chart patterns. Quick quiz for you guys, and I'm not going to read off answers because we've got a huge epic turnout. Where would you trail a stop if you're along DK? This is a swing trading chart. And thanks to all 800 of you for being here. Barry and I appreciate your enthusiasm. Epic turnout. This is the biggest turnout for any of my world's top traders events. So 
Thanks so much for working together, Barry. Anyway, where would you guys trail a stop? Good traders use tight stops. Bad traders who suck and have to hide their trading losses from their significant others use horribly big, awful stops. They'll say, well, I don't know, maybe back here, derp. I like to use a loss of, and Barry had mentioned a good example of congestion zones. A loss of 46 would be where I'd stick a fork in it and take my money and run. So if I got in during a cup pattern breakout, and I agree with Barry too with the moving averages, I always use the 50, the 100, and the 200. I know some people add a tighter one, like Barry mentioned the 15. I know the 20 or the 22 is also popular. I like using the 50, the 100, and the 200 SMA. Anyway, this is a cut pattern breakout. But where would you guys trail a stop? Horrible traders would trail a stop like down here. I'm in it for the money. I've traded as much as 4.9 million worth of trades in a single year. And we're going to get back to these charts. But give that some thought. Let me run through a couple of quick PowerPoints. Mercifully brief. You may have seen me in CBS Market Watch. I'm a money show speaker in the street.com stocks and commodities. I'm a UCLA grad, a former corporate quality engineer and statistician for the Ford Motor Company, which surprisingly just announced they're going to shift away from building cars and mostly SUVs moving forward. Anyway, you may have seen me in every month's issue now of stocks and commodities. I've been in Market Watch since dinosaurs roamed the earth. I'm a money show speaker. I used to run Day Trading University, now Trade Mastery. Here's proof I really traded. I only made 16000 but hey, it beats a kick in the head. It's at least 1000 a month profit on $4.9 million worth of trades I did. And there's my tax return proof that, yes, I actually do really trade, something that uh, earns me trust from thousands of the world's traders. I'm a guy who's actually tested out all this stuff. And the lessons learned, the painful lessons learned, this was a year in which I drank an inordinate amount of coffee, lots of caffeine. Caffeine is a trader's best friend. Anyway, 4.9 million worth of trades in a single year. There's my 1099 tax return proof, baby. So I'm the real deal. You may have seen me all over the place. Minor gap continuations, bullish cut breakouts, and acceleration ramps. That's it for the PowerPoints. Let's take a look at these charts and see what makes them powerful for active traders. One of the most important tips that I will give you is that you've got to trade charts with enough range. If you're trading cheap charts, which I know a lot of you guys do, ladies and gentlemen do, by all means make sure they're consistent charts with wide ranges, multiple points. For example, in this DK chart, what's the point range? So what I'm saying to you is not just the trend. This is the best kind of chart in the entire world to trade because you can position size, as my colleague Dr. Van Tharp would call it, or scale in, add in to winning trades. So if you buy, say, somewhere north of 40, 41 on the cut pattern breakout. You can scale in every two points or so, add more shares. I start off my trade small and cheap. I will trade under $1,000 worth of underlying. So it might be just 20 shares. No shame in that game because I want when I'm wrong, which is still often after nearly 20 years. I've been trading full-time since 1999. Uh, I want the cost of my being wrong to be as cheap as possible. And I'm sure your significant other in your family would agree Listen to what the guy's saying. So I may start off to little baby pilot trades, 20, 30 shares. I might be trading 10 or 15 instruments, but I start off with planting a lot of small seeds. So I might do 20 shares, double down again, another 20, then add 40, then double up to 80 or whatever. So I'm building a trade in a consistent uptrend and then trailing a tight stop for whenever the inevitable reversal occurs. So one of the main points that I want you to get is pay a lot more attention. Here's the writer downer number one. If you get nothing else from this in presentation, get this. When you're looking for great charts, this is good. But if the range on this had been crap, if it had been, say, 33 to 35, this would not have been a good chart to trade. What makes it a great chart to trade is the range is 33 to 48, just under 50, which is a likely reversal zone. The point is we got nearly 20 sticks, 20 points of range. One could have potentially made a boatload of money on this. So again, the chart pattern alone is not enough. The range, the volatility, as well as the volume really counts. So let's go through these charts one at a time. I've got just under 20 minutes, and we will identify cups, acceleration ramps. And that's just basically we've got kind of a steady uptrend that hockey sticks into a sharper angle, 45 degree angle breakout. That's an acceleration ramp. This is a cup pattern after a gap, 
right? So we got all three, a minor gap continuation, did a bullish cup, took out new highs and acceleration ramp, and we're up and off to the races in AES. ANF, Abercrombie & Fitch. This had been good until it wasn't. Here's a quick rider down or two. One of my key exit signals, in addition to using whole numbers and, and the rest of it, is to use two things. One is, you may have seen my Stocks and Commodities article on this, <clears throat> sell into the nines. Whenever something has a nine in it, that's usually an expensive proposition. I'll often buy over a decade value, like 21, 22, let this puppy ride and sell at 28 or 29 as an exit target. A confirming reversal signal. We don't see any shooting stars or bearish engulfings up here, so there's no really voice of the candles telling us to sell. I used the loss of support of two red candles, and that would have generated a sell signal here on 27 and a half. That would have been fine. So if you put your trade on with a, you've got a bullish engulfment here off the 50 SMA, right? That's a bullish engulfing. It pivoted up. For more on candles, learn from my colleague Steve Nesson at candlecharts.com. But the, I did, and it actually works most of the time. So that's cool. Thanks, Steve. But the point is, in a minor gap, it doesn't, oftentimes after a gap, you get a reversal or a resting day. So I never trade, I'll day trade the day of the gap. I don't swing trade the day of the gap. I wait until it takes out a new high above the gap high day. And often a pattern that you'll see is a large candle or two following that gap and the cut pattern. And then the sell, the exit side of it, is to sell something that has an 8 or a 9 in it. That's very simple and very effective, so test it out. You'll be surprised. Whenever something has an 8 or a 9 in it, remember this for the rest of your life as a trader. Thou shalt not use large stops. Thou shalt always sell stuff that has an 8 or a 9 in it. You have a shooting star here, which confirmed that as a sell-exit target with the bearish engulfment here, no less. And then it dropped down to the midpoint for mean reversion. Anyway, this is a gap continuation in AVAV, right? Now, if you're like me, oftentimes you may miss the gap, the day of the gap, uh, and you may want to take a pass on it on a on a move up. This is still good to play if it gets over, say, 58 and a half. Another quick tip to teach you guys is if you do buy new highs, wait for at least 50 cents as a safety buffer above the whole number, because often, how many of you have ever gotten into a trade? I always ask this at my money show events and everybody's hand goes up. How many of you gotten into a, a breakout that looks like a good breakout uh, and it ends up stopping you out and then it then it runs on up without you just to rub salt in the wound? And it's kind of like the trading gods have it in for you. you were, how many of you have done this where you've been directionally correct? Ultimately, the thing did go up and up before you got stopped out. And then you're on the sidelines watching, getting uh, like Homer Simpson going, don't. I hate when that happens, and it continues to run up without you. If you want to cash in on your trades, you've got to learn the patterns that work and the ones that don't. Here's a good example of an acceleration ramp in BCOV. Now, 10 is the obvious, like the Great Wall of China, that was the resistance, the hard wall. So I would not be buying this guy, again, not a trade recommendation, unless it breaks over, say, 10, 20 or so. But this is an acceleration ramp of start of something good. We've got a steady uptrend that hockey sticks into a sharper angle breakout. It pivoted off the 10 whole number resistance, so obviously we don't want to buy it here. But if it does continue on upwards, it's a really good candidate for a continuation play. Here's an example of a gap continuation, BJRI. It gapped up and it ran from 53 to 56 and started to pull back. Another one of my favorite patterns. Always be keenly aware of what price action is doing after congestion zones. Like Barry mentioned in one of the charts, you know, you could box trading range this whole area here. This is this would be a box. The acceleration ramp starts here. And one of my favorite signals, this is another one. You know, again, I'm a guy who's done as much as 4.9 million in real trades in a single year. I know how to trade, is look for signal candles, for lack of a better name. I should come up with something fancy, but I'm... And a plain spoken, straightforward, honest guy, I just like to call it like I see it. A large green honking candle is a good sign of buyers in the in the house, right? So it's a visual representation, especially on high volume, that we had a good breakout. So 50 cents above the high of that or anywhere above the high, of that usually makes for a good breakout. And sure enough, it broke out to new highs. And here we are way up at 56, 57 region. Again, back to the point of ranges. I've trained tens of thousands of traders since the year 1999. 
if I were to say the biggest errors and mistakes is number one, you guys use way too big stops, you use way too big position size, you don't trade enough different instruments, and you trade choppy ass charts. Pardon my friend, you trade choppy charts. So stop the madness. There's got to be a better way. You got to trade charts with wide ranges where the profit potential is there. You've got to trade charts with consistent trends that aren't haphazard and up and down and all over the place. You've got to trade intelligently on high volume, high velocity breakouts where you've got a defined edge. Kind of like playing blackjack. And you've got an 8 3 and the dealer has a 5. I'll double down any day of the week. But if I've got a 5 or 6 and the dealer's got an ace, I'm going to surrender, right? You've got to know your odds. And as a trader, you've got to know your house odds and which charts make for the best sense as well. This is a signal candle back here. Here's a bullish cut breakout. It also looks like the letter V or a triangle with the point at the bottom. Uh, it's a bullish cup breakout. We got a signal candle here, meaning buyers are in town. The confirmation here gave you all day to buy, even the day after, and then boom, it runs up eight points. Hey, not surprisingly, the name of this stock, I, I'll, I'll keep it rated to you. I kid you not, is called Boom. Boom Shakalaka. What a chart. This guy gapped up from 30 to 40. What a chart. What a play. Whole number resistance. It'd be really boneheaded stupid to buy this at 47, 40.8. I wait till 50 cents above whole number highs. And so when I'm trading these kind of guys, my interactive broker's account or my Fidelity or my Ameritrade accounts, I got multiple accounts. I use a buy stop 4150 limit 42 type order flow. You always use stop limit orders because you don't want to buy it, say, if it gaps up to 50. I paid 50 for a derp and then it drops back down to 42 or something. You don't want to be that guy. Uh, use buy stop limit orders for swing trades. So 41, buy stop 4150. It activates. You only get filled if it gets to 4150 with a limit of 42. That's all I want to pay for it. If it gaps to 46, no dice. What about this chart? If you guys trade ultra cheap charts, this is an example of the kind that I cover in my smallcapscans.com advisory service. Hesitatingly, because I don't like trading cheap stocks, even though I've done that for years, I prefer stocks in the $20, $30, $40 dollar share range, like most of these are, right? These, these are the kind of charts I like to trade. Occasional cheapies, but look at the consistency of the trend. This is very hard to find in cheap stocks. Usually cheap stocks are very speculative up and down. I, true story, I've lost the most money trading cheap stocks, paradoxically. So you are not going to become the next penny stock millionaire. Sorry to break it to you, Sparky, but that's not going to happen. Stop the madness. And if you do trade cheap blank charts, trade charts with consistent trends, you know, following cup patterns on high volume, high velocity, 45 degree angle breakouts. So for Pete's sake, if you trade cheap charts, go through the extra time and work of finding charts with consistency. Here's one I like, CRC. And again, the, the, look at the volatility. One of the first things that my eye travels to whenever a trader says, hey, Ken, what do you think about this chart? It's almost always a crap chart that has like a two-point trading range. And I, I politely, I used to not be so polite, but now as I am 54, one mellows as one gets older. I politely say, uh, I like the pattern, but the range isn't good enough. This one, the range is spectacularly good enough. It almost freaking doubled, right? It went from 15 to 26, so well, an 11-point run on a $20 stock. Some profit could have been made on the way up. An acceleration ramp, and no, I don't have some fancy acceleration ramp indicator to sell you. It's called your brain, all right? Your pattern recognition skills. Sorry to break it to you. you got to actually think and use your brains to trade. You're competing against guys like Barry and me, right? People are sharp pencils. You know, you're not going to make it. You're going to get your head handed to if you try and do it all on your own. A lot of traders think, you know, trading is like changing batteries in a flashlight. It's, well, I just do this and that and it's easy. No, you got to be smart. You got to be smarter than the average bear, to quote the cartoon series. Anyway, steady uptrend, sharp angle breakout above. And here's a moving average convergence, like uh, at least of two moving averages. We got a crisscross here. We broke above it and we moved to a shockingly new high seven point run. What I hope to get across to you folks in this presentation is what are the types of charts that professional traders blink and trade? And it's not what you guys are trading. You guys often trade choppy 
stupid charts that chop up and down and in little tiny ranges and limited profit potential. Uh, so, I mean, not to say, not to be harsh, but you've got to trade choice outlier charts. In a stock market that's doing jack squat, here's our S&P on a 90-day daily candlestick chart cycling between the 200 and the 100 simple moving average. It finds support. It finds resistance. It finds support. It finds resistance. They don't know what the heck they want to do. You want to trade charts that go schwang like that. To quote Wayne's World, schwang, party on. Excellent. we got a nice, great chart. Those are the kind of charts that professional traders trade. At least I do in trading millions of dollars worth of trades. Is this starting to make sense? Here's a cut pattern in formation. I like it because it's right over the decade value, right over the 30. My earliest long, I'd be a skeptic. I'd do 32.50. I wouldn't be going 31.70. A lot of traders, myself included, back in the 90s, you'd jump the gun. Well, I don't want to miss out on the breakouts. So I'll buy 31.50. And it goes up a nickel or a dime and then stops you out. And then it runs to 38 without you. And having done that a few thousand times, you learn the difference. So use a safety buffer. Be patient. And the way that I do that to automate my trades, again, is to use those buy stop uh, limit orders in, say, my Fidelity or Meritrade account. Uh, with a good to cancel a GTC order. So that way I don't have to worry about the order flow and being missed out on uh, if it breaks out without me. FTNT. Again, what's the saving grace of this pattern? It's an uptrend. It's got a pullback, so obviously we don't want to trade it here. And personally, because it's way up here 58.50 or so, I would wait till where? Remember, I'm ultra skeptical, kind of like when it comes to people. The older you get, the better judge of character you get. And kind of like hiring employees, you want people, uh, or finding a partner in life, you want people that are honest and hardworking. You know, it's uh, it's great. Anyway, I would wait till 60-50 on this chart. I'd be a skeptic because of the up and down cycle move. It's not as steady an uptrend as this one. Here's guess. This one's a gap continuation. Let me ask you all a quick quiz question. Where would you trail? Our time is almost up here, so our time is almost up, Grasshopper. But where would you trail a stop if you bought this somewhere in 2021 20, or so? And it ran up to 23, and that's cool, but there's trouble in paradise. And kind of like making one of those pesky triangles here that Buried mentioned. So if it drops under the support line, watch out below. Personally, I would trail a stop at 22. That kind of makes sense. That's the and that's not too far off of where it's currently at at 23. So I would trail a stop at 22 on a long on this. Give a lot more thought to your exits than your entries. Because when you trade a good trending chart, I don't care if you bought it at 52 or 53 or 54 or 55. It's a lot like, and it's a true saying, having done this, it's not so hard. Well, it is hard. I should say it's the hard part about making your first million dollars is not so much making it, though that is admittedly a real challenge. But the bigger challenge is keeping the money on the back end. And as a trader, you want to keep your money, you know, like buy it wholesale, sell it retail. And I came up with that. That's a good saying, right? Buy wholesale, sell retail as a trader. You got you got in on, a say, a large signal candle breakout somewhere here. It doesn't matter as a trader if you buy here or you buy here. This, my point is entries are not as important as exits. And Barry was exactly right when he said it's the trade management that separates out professional traders from amateurs. You guys are all, where do I trade the breakout? Derp. It doesn't, I don't care. You can buy 52 or 54 or 55 if you're trading a good trending chart. It doesn't really make a whole heck of a lot of difference. The trick is getting out with as much profit as you can. Maximum trailing stop would be 60, right? If it loses 60, so whether I take six or eight or five points of profit, all I care about, and Barry mentioned this too, which I, I like Barry because he's really smart and he knows what he's talking about, is you want to get paid, all right? So you get in here, you get in there. I don't care where you get in. The trick is getting out with the money intact, kind of like making a lot of money in any endeavor. The goal is taking net profits and net income out of the trades. And again, this is that example on a day trader's chart. Today, you can see a minor gap right above the previous day's high is my favorite chart pattern. That's my number one favorite chart of the three. We covered cups, acceleration ramps, and gappers. I like small, relatively small gaps, right? This is only a 60 cent gap on a $60 stock to a whole number, ran from 61 all the way up to just over 63 for a two point run. 
and continued on up. So it's got a almost four point run today in this, which is really good. Those are the exceptional kind of charts you want to make the bread and butter of your trades. So I hope that this is starting to help you gain clarity. What you really want to do is make sure that one of the, for, and again, what a rock star chart. How much money could you have made on this cheapy chart? But hey, it tripled. It's a tripler. It went from four to freaking 12. How much money could you have made? The trick is, and again, it's not so much the entry. I don't care if I buy six or six and a half or seven or seven and a half. All I want is to make money. I'm in it for the money. To quote Star Wars Episode Four: New Hope, I don't care about the princess. I want to get paid. If gold is all you want, then gold's what you want. Well, great. Give me the gold. I trade gold too. I like uh, GDX. But the point is, I don't care if I buy anywhere in here on the breakout. The trick is getting paid on the reversal. So I would trail a stop on this on a swing trade at say 11. If this guy gets back to 11. Wham, bam, thank you, I'm out. Because I can always rebuy a new high up at 1450 if it keeps running to infinity and beyond. But, you know, giving back profits at this point in my life uh, is, to quote my favorite movie, The Princess Bride, inconceivable, right? As a guy who's actually traded, you know, as much as 4.9 million worth of real money trades profitably in a single year, didn't make a whole lot of money, but I got four, almost $5 million worth of practice in so and got paid for it. So that's that's cool. But the point is, as a guy's real money trader, I learned this stuff the hard way with thousands of real money trades. So what I learned was, and this is a strategic lesson learned, it doesn't matter so much where you get in. What matters infinitely more is where you get out. In one of my YouTube videos, I say your unrealized P&L, your unrealized P&L in a trade is the most important indicator. When I ask my money show audiences, you know, this question, let's say I got in somewhere in here and let's say I'm up 800 bucks on the trade, however many shares that would have worked out to be. If I'm up $800 unrealized P&L on the trade, I'm really going to get pissed off if I screw up and wait for it to come back down and I only get $100 out of the trade because I was using some stupid horizontal support or resistance line. I want to get paid. If I'm unrealized P&L, 800 bucks in the trade, if it goes back down to unrealized 700, I don't care where on the chart it is, I want to take my $700 and run. Thank you very much. Kind of like a bank robber. You get in there before the SWAT team hits the door, right? Not that any of us would do that, but I like the movie Heat was good. Heat with De Niro. But the point is, you want to get paid. So you get in on the way up. And again, unrealized PL. If you're up, say, six, let's say, well, let's just use my example. If you're up $800 unrealized PL on the trade, I at that point cease to look at the charts. If I'm up at least three, dollars $400 unrealized PL on a trade, I don't care what the chart says my exit should be. I care about the percentage of profit. So if I'm up $800, I may let it soften down to $700, but that's as, as far as I'm going to let the stock market take my money, my profits back. I don't care what the chart says. The chart becomes useless at that point. Does that make sense? Anyway, some other good charts. You can see the price action patterns here. I've got no time left. So when you do day trade or swing trade, for Pete's sake, you should never day trade charts under $10. That's for morons and amateur college kids. You don't see anybody over 50 day trading penny stocks and cheap stocks. That's for youngsters who don't know what they're talking about. We want professional traders want charts that have at least a point or two of range on an open range breakout play that have good profit potential. If you're looking at as pattern day trading. I, I founded the original day trading university. Uh, I look at day over day price action, open range breakouts. If it ran about yay far yesterday, it's likely to run almost that far today. And that's how you set up your trades as a day trader with charts with consistent wide trading ranges with high volume of at least 15,000 shares a minute. And for swing trades, at least a million shares a day. So I hope that this gives you, that's kind of like 20 years of experience packed into 28 minutes. But these kind of charts are rock stars, right? Look at the consistency, the range, the volatility, the price action patterns. And I hope that those three patterns from Barry and three patterns from myself helps you make bigger winning trades more often a way of life. Because it can be done. But you got to stop trading those, you know, the choppy cheap charts or the inconsistent charts. That's where you guys get into trouble.
I'm going to wrap up. You may want to get in on my free Saturday events. We are up at just over 5,000 traders registered for those. My Trading Week Ahead broadcast is a webinar that's not recorded, so you got to be there live every Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern. So you are certainly welcome to participate in those. You can go to trademastery.com, my site, and sign up for those for absolutely free. If you click on this link, free trading webinars, or this Trading Week Ahead link, that'll get you to my go-to webinar. You can also get this swing trading ebook that I uh, did last year. It's only about 20 pages long. It's not some long-winded, boring thing. It's got five top chart patterns, and you can get that for free, swing trading success. Another thing that I offer for stock swing traders who like to swing trade these kind of charts is swing scans. You can try that for three weeks for the low, low price of only $7, and you can use PayPal or Visa or MasterCard, and that's my premium weekly stock trading. You can see an explainer video, and thanks, I got voted top two of five articles, uh, stocks and commodities last year, so and I'm a real money trader. I've been around forever. Anyway, Swing Scans is my premier alert service for stock swing traders, but start off free. You know, I think anybody... You know, like Barry's has such outstanding content on his YouTube channel, uh, as I would hope people think I do too on my YouTube channel. Uh, very popular. Uh, learn from us for free and then consider uh, purchasing our services and products because we've been around for a long time and you don't want to figure this out and trade on your own. So anyway, I hope that that helps. I wanted to thank all of you for being here and a special shout out to my colleague, Barry Burns from Top Dog Trading for being with me. It's been great. And I will see you guys in our free monthly Saturday, or free, I, this should say weekly. I used to do them only once a month, and now it's weekly. So every single week, uh, got over 5,000 registered. Thanks so much for being here, folks. I will have GoToWebinar send you a replay link for tonight's event, so you can download and watch that in crystal clear video. And I'll see you guys coming up in another, soon, another session soon. So remember... Dr. Barry Burns at www.topdogtrading.com. He's one of the good guys. And I'm Ken Calhoun at trademastery.com. So learn from us. Until next time, trade with passion, or at least intelligence. Trade with itty-bitty stops. Play the field, trade the strongest charts, and let's go get them. Take care and best wishes for success in your trades. Goodbye, everybody.